just a little upset. So that's Theo. And Theo, this is a little, a little sideline, as Theo is about to, in this fancy private school, get seriously, seriously, violently bullied to the point where both boys wind up in the hospital. And when I was writing this, I, I said to myself, can this happen in a place like this, in a school like this? So I called all the places that you call, and everybody said to me, absolutely. This cuts across every single socioeconomic border. And he said, one thing you may not know, one of the people I talked to is, is that these, this is so disturbing to a kid's sense of self that they sometimes never get over it. I mean, to have you know, a nascent feeling about yourself at the age of 15 or 16, violently met. Um, he said, these kids are traumatized. And, and I didn't know that. And I, I tried to indicate that in the book. There's a big scene at the end where that is dealt with. <clears throat> Pardon me. And when I say this is all about mothers, mothers and sons, there is a character, the mom, who you're going to hear just a little bit from. And um, she is based on this woman that I met. And she has nothing but good intentions. Nothing. And yet, the world is bigger than her good intentions. And she is forced to face that. And I'm going to read a tiny little passage here where she has called together her ex-husband, his boyfriend, her husband, and the kid to figure out what's going on and to what they're going to do. And she's already decided in her mind he's getting plucked out of the apartment with the two men and is coming right back home, although she won't admit that at the beginning. And they're sitting in the restaurant and the boy is an hour late. And they're forced to deal with each other. And he has gone upstairs you know, to check his Facebook thing and he's tw you know, tweeting and, and it's all these things that they hate and don't know how to do. And so she is, um, her name is Lola. And this is the beginning of her chapter here. As we await Wesley's return, I calm myself with a private recitation of my CV. I am Louise Farmer Corman, Lola since I was a girl, loved by my husband, able in my field. I am the mother of a boy who has always excelled at school, at sports, in friendship. And now, in less than a full day, I am someone whose child is held for observation mumbles fine when I ask him how he is, lets me know that my concern is a burden and an annoyance. Then I see him. He is with us. He has 12 stitches over his right eye, which looks twice as puffy and swollen as it did yesterday, multiple abrasions and a broken left index finger in a splint. Wesley, I say, as if there were some chance it might not be him, that none of this has happened. Hey, we all say. Finish your text, he says, with a gracious sweep of a swollen purple hand. It's cool. He slowly approaches and, still standing, snatches a piece of bruschetta from the platter. He needs a haircut. That's what I think first, hating myself for thinking it. And he smells, too. Boys do, I know. A friend with boys says it's, from the, it's the sweat from their long race to manhood. I give him a moment to crunch and chew, which looks like it hurts him. Oh, this is good, he says. Just the right amount of garlic, not overpowering. He burps and wipes his mouth with a blood-drenched sweatshirt. I feel myself relax. This can go well. No one needs to be hurt or even upset. And don't charge. Approach gently, on tiptoe. It turns out that what he wants is not a seat with us, but a second piece of bruschetta. He paces as he eats it, making muffled grunting sounds. I see him mid-bite, gag, hunch over, and turn away from us. Wesley, I said, sweetheart, what is it? As he turns back, I see blood flow from his mouth. He guards something in his hand. Is it a tooth, I ask? He shows it to me, holding it out. I've never actually seen a knocked out tooth. Dipped in blood with the dangling root, it looks like a gory punctuation mark. Let me have it, 
I say as one might to a small dog or child. Ha <laughs> ha, he just laughs. No way, it's mine. Does it hurt, I ask him? Ha, <laughs> hey, he says with a knowing chuckle I've never heard from him. This is what happens in fights, right? He pitches this to the men at the table, and I'm grateful no one answers. That's mom. It gets worse from there. It starts to, uh, to uh, explode and explode and explode. And I'll just give you a sort of a, a little bit of a glimpse at the end, is that, that the mother winds up, in spite of herself, making this accusation. Wesley takes off, and the final scene is he comes back, and he has a, there's a very long um, scene with him on the roof with George, between George and him, where he basically learns what it is to be a man. And this really, the book is, is one of the things the book is about is, is how do we grow up? And what kind of love is possible in the world? And by that I don't mean heterosexual or homosexual love. This is really a story about somebody who is viewing the various forms of love around him and making choices from what he sees. And he is fortunate in a way because he's seeing all kinds of ways of adults relating to each other. So it's this heroic journey of this kid who has, you know, who is brave, who is true to his friend, who can cut through adult bullshit, basically, and figure out who he is. It's this major passage that this boy has. And that's what the book is about. Um, uh, and I can just say, how am I doing time-wise here? Uh, it's time to wrap it up. It was so much fun to write, and I uh, never thought it would get published. And it did. Uh, a number of people wanted to publish it as a YA uh, because I would say about half of it is in the boys' voices. But it's a spectrum book. You know, it is not um, uh, forbiddingly sophisticated. Uh, it's about everybody in the book is a young adult in one way, sort of trying to figure out who they are, trying to put themselves together. And it's about how this family is impacted by this boy's insistence upon the truth and how they get stronger and better and how they come to know themselves more deeply. Uh, and, you know, the way it got to Oprah Winfrey was just not through any agency of mine as I got a call one day about a month before it was published and someone there had read it and said, we would like to do something with this. And I just thought, you know, this is the book I wrote to get out of television, and now it's sort of like bringing me back in. But it's been, I've been writing the script for it right now, and the, 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 the um, material of the script is about three months before the action of the book, uh, when he first gets the idea that he wants to live with his dad. And the shit hits the fan, because the mother doesn't want him to, but can't say it. So this is another thing that the book is about, is what we can't say that we wish we can say, but that somebody knows we're really thinking. In this case, this teenage boy. So that's pretty much uh, uh, it. Um, in terms of service learning, I mean, this is really, you know, I mean, the two things that Janet talked about and what, what everybody else has talked about, uh, I hope it's, it's clear, you know, uh, since I've given that no thought whatsoever. Um, and I also just wanted to uh, uh, read this little dedication at the end, I'll tell you why. Um, it said, my parents, Claire and Alan Kramer, have always encouraged me, enjoyed me, and given me enough room to be always, sometimes perplexingly, myself. Books, reading, words, they loved all these and saw that I loved them too. When I am in my 90s, as they are, I hope to have some portion of their openness to experience, their deep sense of responsibility, and their endless and surprising forgiveness. Um, and my mom uh, passed away last week, and uh, she had this at her bedside and uh, the whole time that she was in the last part of her life. And I realize now that this book is really about them, not just for them, but as I read my words this afternoon, I said, that's the story that I wanted to tell. So I wanted to just dedicate this um, to my mom, Claire. Thank you. Thank you.